All right, we're back and we're learning about custom elements or web components, whichever you want to call it. And now we're going to talk about attributes and properties and doing them right. So I'm going to write a little code. And what this is doing is adding a button to the page and a script that's going to be run whenever you hit the button to change the product name to Dubalaki. And so let's try that out and see if it doesn't work. Ta-da! It doesn't work. So, well, why is that? So, well, first, in the constructor, you can see that we only set the name in the constructor, right? So we need to set that in response to a change. And this is where it gets interesting. It turns out that custom elements have a bunch of lifecycle methods. And one of those is attribute changed callback. They're all called some some sort of variety of callback. I'm not sure why that is. I mean, it seems implicit that you're going to get called back if it's a lifecycle event, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, as the name implies, that's going to get called when an attribute, and that's what, what name is, changes. So, well, let's write that. All right, so there are three arguments to attribute changed callback. Uh, the name of the attribute that changed, the old value, which we ignore, and then the new value. And so we check to see if name is, well, name of the attribute, and in this case, we're looking for name. And then we uh, set the inner text of that to the new value. So we're going to try it. And it doesn't work. So why is that? Well, it turns out that you need to tell the browser that you are interested in those attributes and interested, interested in observing those attributes. And we do that by having a static function called observed attributes that returns an array of the names of those attributes that you want to change, you want to listen to, observe. So let's give that a go. And let's try that again. Nice. Now it works. Awesome. It's like I'm reading from a script or something. Anywho, uh, to make it easy myself, I'm going to add another button so I can toggle it back. Cool. Now those flip. So uh, let's, go, let's talk about properties. Let's say I also want to be able to set the name directly via JavaScript, right? Not by uh, an attribute on the tag. Something like this. Let's try that again, see if that works. So that doesn't work, but it will work if I add a getter and a setter. Let's do that. All right, so that works, which is really cool because now we have symmetric behavior between the name attribute and the name property. All right, so moving on to the next thing, and that's events. And there are two sides to that particular coin. There are events within a custom element, and then there are events that are dispatched from the custom element to the parent page. So first thing first, let's add a button to our custom element so we have something to listen to. All right, so how do we listen to that? So now we're in vanilla JS land. So that means that we have add event listener and remove event listener, but where, where should I put those? Well, we could put the add event listener in the constructor, but where would we remove the event listener? Well, so two more of those callbacks come to the rescue, connected callback and disconnected callback. So let's try those out. All right, so let's try that out and see if we have some events. Cool, so alerting one tells us that we get a click event from that button. All right, now, as you might suspect from the names of those methods, connected is called when a custom element is placed on the page and disconnected is called when it's removed. And since we're good little web citizens, we're gonna remove our event listeners because we don't want any leaks. 
Okay, so now we know how to listen for events within our elements and how do we let our parent page know when a customer, say, wants to buy these headphones or do blacky or whatever. So for that, we're going to use dispatch event. And never heard of it? No problem. I mean, why would you? It's not something really we normally do. Uh, not from an, uh, because we're not a an element, and we're usually listening to elements. So let's go and dispatch something. All right, we've replaced the alert with a dispatch, and it takes an event object that you get to name whatever you want and add any attributes that you want to it. For example, you can add a second thing in here and that's got an object and that would have any attributes you want on it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the inspector in Chrome. So from here, I'm going to use the jQuery kind of light stuff built right into the console to use dollar to find it and then add an event listener to it and see if we can look for our custom event. All right, so I've added that event listener for buy, and when I click on it, it's going to hit, it's going to say, woohoo. Nice. Okay, cool. All right, let me put the Chrome inspector away. And we've covered properties and events, and the last thing I want to do is custom, uh, talk about custom methods. So uh, let's imagine that our button wants to start out invisible. And we want to have show and hide methods that are custom to that element that then show that button. And finally, let's call those methods from our existing buttons because I'm, I'm pretty lazy and frankly this example makes zero practical sense anyway. All right, looks like our custom methods are working just fine. All right, so one more hip tip about the Chrome Inspector because it's just super cool. So here, let's go bring that up again, but let's bring it up on headphones. And now let's go back to my product. And what you can see is this little dollar zero over here. That's actually set within the console. So I can actually go over here and just start playing with whatever attributes or methods on dollar zero I want. I can show it, I can hide it, I can set attributes on it, all kinds of really cool stuff. So freaking cool, really nice way to play with our newly defined custom elements without actually having to go back to the original source code and do all the recompile and everything else. Okay, so we've covered a lot in this little video. Uh, attributes, properties, events, and custom methods. And so what's next? Well, the next is slots. They're super cool. Don't bake your noodle a little bit, but that's cool too, or not probably a lot smarter than me. Let's see uh, over in the next video.